Good afternoon. My name is John Smith. I'm a 1972 graduate of Michigan State College of Veterinary Medicine and have been practicing small animal medicine in southeastern Michigan since that time. And I'd like to thank you today for having the opportunity to talk with you about a topic that I think is very important, namely canine nutrition. And what I'd like to do is talk about it from a functional medicine point of view. And what I mean by that, to compare it to talking about cars, yeah, we're going to kick the tires, open the hood, and see what goes on inside the engine. Most people, when they talk about canine nutrition, are very concerned about the type of food, the ingredients, things like that, but once the dog swallows the food, then the conversation seems to stop. And that's the point at which I really get interested in things. I want to understand what's going on nutritionally in the dog's body down to the cellular level, and I'm convinced that these things have very important ramifications for health of of the dog and the reason that I think this is about seven years ago I developed a condition that's called trigger finger. Basically what happens if you grip very hard this, the index finger will not open. You literally have to take your other finger and pry it open. Needless to say that was quite disturbing and when I went to the doctor he said, he said yes you have trigger finger and we're going to send you the hand surgeon and the problem is that you've, nodules have formed on the tendons of your fingers and as they go through a sheath, they're getting caught. And that seemed to make sense. But then he said, you'll have to have surgery every three years. Well, having done a fair amount of surgery myself, I know that you can only operate in the same area a limited number of times. So that didn't seem to me to be a very good answer to the problem. And at that point, the doctor actually said to me, when it hurts bad enough, you'll be back. Well, I haven't been back. After I got over being angry about that, I started doing research and was fortunate enough to find a website that talked about carpal tunnel, trigger finger, and things like that in terms of being related to food hypersensitivities. And they had a short list of foods that were the most common problems. Well, I'd been a vegan for 25 years, so I could instantly cross off all the eggs, meat, dairy products, and things like that. The next ingredient on the list was wheat. And one weekend, I didn't eat any wheat. By Monday morning, the problem was gone. And I found since then, if I by accident eat some wheat, uh, the problem returns. And the problem really is that I'm gluten sensitive. And that experience was literally a life-changing, at least career-changing discovery because it opened my eyes to the possibility that food may be a very important part or important component of all sorts of rather obscure chronic diseases that conventional medicine really doesn't have very good answers for. And at that point, started investigating the, the whole process of food allergy testing in dogs, and by trial and error and observing my patients, have come up with a program that works very well for, for all sorts of chronic problems, especially allergies, skin problems, arthritis, anything that is of chronic nature, and by that I mean if it has been present for three months or more, it's a chronic di disease condition, and food will play a very important part in that. It may not be the whole answer, but it certainly will be a very significant part of it. 